So you want to start iRacing, but you don't know where to begin. You might be on a budget. Well, this is going to be the video for you because I am going to get you up and running, strapped in to the cockpit. We are going racing to what I think is one of the best racing simulators out there. So let's just roll right into it. Yo guys and girls, what is up, what is up, what is up? This is gonna be a cool video because I wanna get you guys into iRacing because if you are a fan of racing games, this, this is where you wanna be. This is the, to me, in my opinion, of course it's subjective, to me, this is the greatest racing game of all time. Um, if you're into NASCAR, this is really the only place to be for NASCAR because this is one of the only simulators that that, that is like a true full NASCAR experience, but you also have road racing, you have dirt racing, you have you have all types of cars, vehicles, you have trucks, you have open wheel, you, you have everything from A to Z. This is the place to be. But I know, you know, you're getting started and, and you might be a little intimidated because you think, oh man, iRacing, that's for like the pros. Well, you've come to the right place because I am the casual racing gamer. I am just a casual Racer. And of course, guys, if you enjoy the video, definitely please thumb it up and think about subscribing. Um, I do lots of iRacing videos and just other racing games in general. So, so you know, if you enjoy stuff like that, I definitely appreciate it if you guys stick around, hang around, and just have fun on the channel with me. But anyway, moving on from that, don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. I am going to show you, you know, we're going to go over the minimum. I know a lot of channels out there that, you know, this, this can, this can, couldn't empty out your bank account. A lot of channels out there show you, you know, big professional sim racing rigs, you know, big time desktop PCs to, to power like the most powerful triple monitors, 4K. Well, I'm gonna get you started here for guys on a budget or just someone who doesn't know where to begin or doesn't wanna go full-fledged $20,000 setup because you don't even know if you're gonna like it, right? So we can get racing, you know, and again, what I call inexpensive inexpensive for this hobby so we're going to look around a one thousand dollar budget to get you up and running fully with everything you need that you can actually start racing on day one with this budget now you might even have things you already need so you might not even need to purchase you, you might already have a computer and don't even realize your computer is good enough to power i racing i racing does not require the most powerful pc to run it's going to depend on what you want to run how you want to run it but if you want to run on a single monitor you know, basic setup, even if you need to lower some settings down in iRacing, you can pretty much remove every setting. You can basically race on an empty track with nothing around you and remove every, all the details and just race on a track with a car and that's it. So, so, so there's a lot of options out there, but I'm gonna, I, I just went around and I just looked around for some stuff to get you, to give you examples of how you can actually get into this. I'm gonna show you what, you know, an example of, of a computer that you can buy, a wheel and pedals, and a stand and the price to get into iRacing. Now also understand iRacing is a subscription based service. So we'll get into the cost of that as well. But let's first, first thing you need to, first thing right off the bat, you're gonna need a computer, right? So iRacing in general does not require anything too powerful to run. So, so let's take a look at, at some of the requirements directly from iRacing itself. So we need to have Windows 10 at a minimum 64 bit here, which is supported. And obviously they recommend 64-bit Windows 10, but Windows 11 also supported. So I'm usually like an Intel NVIDIA person, Intel for my CPU, NVIDIA for my graphics card, but you can go the AMD route and you should probably save a little more money um, as those are usually, you can find things a little less expensive, but I'm gonna show you an Intel and Nvidia option here. And then, you know, you guys can spend more money and you can definitely find deals less than I'm even gonna show you. So it's gonna, again, it's gonna all be what your budget is, how much you wanna spend, but your minimum, your minimum here, look, you can go with an Intel Core i5, what is that, like a fourth gen, four cores and yet AMD if you have an FX 6300 or an AMD Ryzen 3 1200. So, you know, you can go pretty low here on, on your processor. Now, iRacing is processor heavy. So, you know, we, we, we want to try to upgrade our processor, you know, and, and you know, what is, the mo what is the most you want to spend and what is the best way to spend your money? So they recommend six cores. So six cores, we're moving up to an i7 and we're moving up to an AMD Ryzen 7 and, and a Ryzen 5. And then the high end, we're going like Intel Core 9. You know, memory, 
16 gigs is recommended is the minimum. I ran 16 gigs for a long time. I recently upgraded to 32, but 16 gigs is the minimum and, and we're gonna get into a 16 gig system here. So also the graphics we're looking at, a minimum two gig into your dedicated graphics card. So we're looking at a GTX 660 at two gigs. You have an ATI Radeon and then they show you like an AMD 550. They recommend six gigs of VRAM, which we're looking at like maybe a 1060 with six gigs of RAM. But again, you know, anywhere from two to that six to that eight is even better. But again, this is for the budget, budget looking minded, looking into just trying to hop into sim racing, hop into iRacing. Um, storage, usually never a problem. We're looking at DirectX, was not gonna be a problem. Controller, yes, you can hop into iRacing with the controller. You can, you can just like an, just like your, your, you know, your PS5 controller that you are racing or your Xbox system, that controller can also be used for iRacing. Do I recommend that? No. Now, if you want to experience, if you want to like really experience what racing is about, you got, you want to, you want a wheel. So we're not even going to talk about controllers, but yes, you can hop in with the controller. Obviously you're going to need like internet, a good connection and things like that. Um, Mac computers. I don't deal with Mac computers, but it does show you here that you can run it on a Mac with certain certain um, boot camp utility to run Windows. Now, we'll talk about the i iRacing membership after, but let, let's first get you in a PC. So I just randomly looked for something really quick, and this just shows you like how easy it is to find a nice budget laptop. Even a, I didn't look for a desktop, I just found a laptop here, but you can even go desktop route, and desktop will give you more options for upgrading. And if you wanna later on you know, upgrade your, your GPU, it, you're definitely gonna go the desktop route with that where going with the laptop is not gonna allow you to usually do those upgrades. So this laptop that I pulled up here was off of eBay. Now, you know, look, you can look at eBay, you can look at Best Buy, you can look at Walmart, you can look at Target, you can look, you know, anywhere, if you're in another country, whatever your local stores are, there's always deals to be had that you can get into something not too expensive and something pretty decent. Now, when I started iRacing, I started on an RTX, 2060 laptop and I ran iRacing completely fine with that. But we're looking at here, we have a gaming laptop with an RTX 3050 Ti 512 gigs. Now also understand when looking at a 3050 Ti or any kind of any kind of pro, any kind of GPU within a laptop. So if you see like an RTX, let's say 3060 laptop and you see an RTX 3060 desktop and, it, and if they're around the same price, so you can afford to go with the desktop version, buy yourself a desktop. They're more powerful GPUs. They run more power on more power and, and, they, and they will give you better performance, but you can totally get great performance with a 3050 Ti in this laptop. You don't wanna worry about the screen really on this because most likely you're gonna hook it up to an HDMI port into your TV. So you can go something a little bigger than the screen. Yes, you can race on the on a screen, on a laptop, but it's really small. So you can just hook this laptop into any TV and get yourself a bigger experience into a monitor or anything. So any TV you have in the house that takes an HDMI you know, in, then, then you're good to go like that. But this is $699. So we're going at $699, so $700. This is where our biggest budget's gonna be. So, so you, can, you can look for something a little more. You can look for something a little less, but this is just a general, generally something I found. And yes, this comes with an i5 12th gen. So you're getting a, getting a pretty recent i5 Intel CPU. And this also comes with 16 gigs of RAM. Make sure if you're looking for something, you have 16 gigs of RAM. That's very important. Also, just another option, you know, just looking again. This is really quick. Came up, found something on Target. They had a sale, $779. This is a little more expensive. This is an RTX 3050 as well. Also an i5 12th gen, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, so, you know, there's two options right there between seven and $800 just for the laptop. So that, that's a lot of our budget right there, right? So then we need a wheel. So, so I'm gonna give you two options here to get started on, on, on a wheel. And this is a Thrustmaster T150. And I personally use this. I started using this from years ago when I started iRacing and I am still using this wheel today. You can be competitive. You can be a great racer with this T150. So right now it's priced at 228. You can probably find some of these used on eBay or something like that. And you can even get this even less expensive. The most important thing when you're buying a wheel is you want force feedback. Do not buy a wheel that does not have force feedback. You, you need that experience. The force feedback will actually help you feel the road, feel the bumps. And, and it's not, this This is different than, than vibration. It doesn't just vibrate when something happens. It actually forces the wheel to move left, right, bouncing and stuff like that. So you'll actually feel the track. So you definitely do not go anything that does not have force 
feedback. There's a T, this is the T150. This is good also if you have a PS5 or a PS4, it plays well on those systems. They also sell a different version of the T150. Um, I can't remember the actual name of it, but they have the same version. So if you own an Xbox, buy the Xbox version, and then you can use it for your PC and Xbox racing as well. So, so if you do have a gaming console, I would definitely recommend buying the one that works with your gaming console. So this one only has two pedals, so you don't have a clutch. It does, it does have paddle shifters, so you will have to use auto clutch if you go this route. Now, if you don't know how to drive clutch and you don't want to manually do clutch, this is great for you. It'll auto clutch for you in the game and you just shift, shift with the paddle shifters. Now, there's another option if you do want to go straight out with a clutch um, with, with paddles as well. This is like another a little, a little bit more expensive. This is a really popular wheel. The G29 Logitech runs around 262 right now. A little more money you're getting the clutch as well on here. So for me, what I did is I eventually upgraded to this pedal set to my 150 wheel. Now this does have a clutch, but I do not use clutch. I still use auto clutch in the game. But if you guys aren't used to manually shifting, then don't be afraid to hop into iRacing. Just use auto clutch. You'll, you'll have to just use your paddle shifters to shift up and down, but you don't need to use the clutch, which is qu quite simple if you've never done shifting at all. Very easy to do that. But when you start getting into actually manually shifting with a clutch, that's a whole nother ball game. But don't make that stop you to get into iRacing. But I, what I did was I upgraded my pedals to this pedal set. And I'm just showing you this as an extra. This is like an extra down the line bonus for $209. But this is something you can upgrade to to with your t150 wheel and this has load cell pedals and the brakes actually have pressure to it so it's not the same from top to bottom and this will definitely help you improve racing at that pressure that you want in a brake system the price of these pedals are insane for 200 dollars for what you're getting so even even the, the logitech even though that has three pedals they're not load cell pedals so so these pedals will be better than both pedal sets in those so now that you have your wheel and your pedals you know you can mount the wheel to a desk and put your pedals under the desk as long as it's like up against the wall so it doesn't get pushed back but here's the, here's a cheap alternative that you can actually you know hook your pedal and wheel up to and you don't need this if you have a desk that you want to hook this up to but i use something like this and you know it doesn't come in a racing chair you can get something for you know maybe like two 250 that comes with a racing chair built into this but again this is basic this just is something to put your wheel on lock your pedals in and you can just put a seat right in front of it me personally i take my kitchen seat i put it in front of this and i race so this is just an option again inexpensive stand if you need a stand um, I highly recommend it if, if, if you don't have a desk that's perfectly set up to hold your wheel and your pedals. Something like this, $79.99. Just look for basic stands like this. They're on Amazon. There's a bunch of different types. If you want to spend a little more money, again, you can get one with an actual seat. So, so we have our laptop for $6.99. We have our wheel and pedals for $228. And then we have a stand, which is optional if you need it for $80. And we are at the $1,007 mark. So right now we are getting right into iRacing at $1,000. Again, we can save money if you want to go a cheaper route on a, on a laptop or a PC. I'm sure you can find like a 1660 Super or, a, or even an RTX 2060 level. You know, those are going to be less expensive. You can find them. You can go to like Best Buy, look at open box deals on desktops and laptops. And, you know, you can save even more money on this. But, you know, we're looking at something new, something that, that's kind of, you know, recent, a 3050 Ti, and we are hopping into this at $1,000. Now, let's talk. The last thing we want to talk about is iRacing. iRacing itself is a subscription-based service, so you will have to pay monthly, yearly, and things like that. And then we also have to pay for tracks and courses as well as we go on. So, if you're a new member, and th this is where you, you know, don't, don't go... Don't go bad here as a new member. Do not do like one month for seven, eight, seven dollars and eighty cents because once you sign up, you are going to lose this membership fee for forty percent off your first sign up. What I would do is I would at least do if you know you're interested in this and you have the equipment and if you love racing games, you're, you're going to love this. There's there's no doubt about it. I don't think I've ever met anyone that that's tried this and they're like, oh man, I hate racing and I racing. It's terrible. It, it's you know. You're going to enjoy it if you're playing like arcade racing games or anything like that. This is on a whole nother level. You know, at one year, it's $66. You're saving 40%. So so that, that for me personally, that's where I would actually start at. But if you know you're going to be like full-fledged, you're dedicated to this, you know, two years at $119 is, is still, you know, a great deal if you if you want to put in for the for the two years. But if you're on a budget, you know, we want to, we want to you know, look at least the one year if you're on a budget. 
Now, every time the iRacing only has deals after this for, for current members, usually around Christmas time, Thanksgiving time for like Black Friday deals. That's the only time they usually send out a coupon code. And I think you save like 20 or 25% if you want to re-sign. Otherwise, you won't find a deal the rest of the year. That's the only time it comes around. And that is the time that you're going to want to re-sign. So that's the time you really want to save is when you initially sign up. And then what you want to do is you want to look for those deals, you know, around the holiday season at the end of the year. So once you sign up, you have your subscription, you will get free racetracks. You will get free cars. Um, you start out in rookie and that stuff is free. As you move up, you will need to purchase cars. You will need to purchase tracks. So like, let's just say for, um, if you want to move up in the NASCAR series from rookie, it goes to class D, which is like the Arkham Menard series. You know, you're going to have to purchase that Arkham Menard's car. Um, and you know, the cars, I'm trying to think, I don't remember what cars run, maybe like $10 or, or something like that. Tracks can run around $14, some are less, less expensive than that. Once you purchase that car, you can race in any Arca Menards series with that car that you purchased. You just have to have the track or own the track. Um, they will race on tracks that are free, but a lot of the tracks also are purchased tracks. So you'll have to look to purchase a track. If they're at a certain track at a certain week and you want to race on that week, you might need to purchase that track and then you'll own that track. So anytime any of the other series race on this track. So if you go to class C, which is like the truck series, class B, Xfinity, class A, which is the Cup series, and that track comes around, you know, you'll own that track. You'll be able to race that track, but you will have to buy the vehicles for those other classes. So you'll have to buy a truck. If you want to race the truck series, you'll have to buy an Xfinity car. You'll have to buy a Cup series car. So, you know, you can go in a rabbit hole of spending a lot of money, um, but you can do it over time. You can slowly build up, build up your catalog of, of tracks and cars. And then, you know, there's always free races every week that you can find and race on. Um, so it's just a matter of what you want to race, but just keep that in mind. So I think that's a wrap. I think, I think we covered it, how to actually get into iRacing at around a thousand dollars, um, a give or take a couple, you can save, you can obviously spend, you can go down a rabbit hole of spending, you know, 20, 30, 40 days, people out there with a hundred thousand dollars sim rigs, but this was just to get you started something inexpensive, again, inexpensive, depending on, you know, what your budget, what your, what your finances are, that could still be a lot of money for a lot of people. Um, and there's definitely ways that you can, you know, trim some things off. You might actually have a, a, a PC or a laptop already that, that can already play this. So you might not even, you might be able to just cut out that part of this and then you can really get in this cheap. So, you know, so take a look at the minimum specs. Like I showed you, if you have something that can run it, that's perfect. If you have a desktop PC, maybe you might just need to upgrade your GPU to something a little more recent than what you have if you have something older. So that might be an option for you as well. But, you know, I just wanted to show you how easy iRacing actually is to get into. Again, don't be intimidated. Um, don't think the best, the best drivers in the world are going to be racing against you. That's not the case. Everything is based on an I rating. So you will race with other drivers that are in your class and in your talent. So if you're not that good, you'll be racing with guys that are not that good. They'll be in the same score as you. So you're not going to be racing against, you know, pro drivers. You'll be racing against other people. And trust me, there's a lot of drivers out there that are not that good, like you and me. So, so I have never claimed to be great. I just do this for enjoyment. I have fun. Um, and, 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 and I'm not looking to go pro sim racing and I'm nowhere near the level of most of these guys driving. Um, so I, I, you know, don't, don't be scared to hop into it like that and think, you know, this is for pros and this is for people that know what they're doing. They, they literally, when you get into rookie, it's basically like a wreck fest and basically everyone in rookie really doesn't know what they're doing. And it's just, you know, it's just learning how to survive actually. And then you'll move up as you get better. So definitely don't be afraid to hop into iRacing. It is such an awesome sim and if you guys have any other questions you know if i can answer them you know I'll be, I'll be happy to answer them i read all your comments so please you know leave that comment below i'll try to help you out as best as i can you know i love i love for you to enjoy i racing and sim racing as much as i enjoy it so if you guys enjoyed the video if it helped you out please leave a like you know think about subscribing um you know lots lots of cool stuff going on here and um you know i really appreciate you guys watching and i hope this really helped you out and uh we'll see you on the next one we out of here peace